Hello again. Okay, I can see you looking at the green screen and thinking, like, oh God, not again. Yep, last one didn't work very well, did it? But that's all the more reason to keep trying because this is my experimental ground, the daily blog. If you're thinking about my bathroom problem, the shower being flooded and all that, that's all been taken care of, it's all good now. I did actually enjoy what it turned out to be. It was actually the daily vlog that caused my shower to be flooded, yeah. I'm not even joking. It was the daily vlog that caused my cubicle, shower cubicle, to be filled with uh, water from the toilet bowl. Uh, if you don't believe me, okay, I'll explain. You can't see it behind the green screen, but there is a door here that leads to the cellar. And on the top step of the cellar, there is a pump that actually works to get that uh, water from the toilet. Every time I flush it, it takes that away. Uh, and that was turned off. Why was it turned off? Because on that top step, I store some things that I don't use every day, but that I do use quite often. For example, uh, the pop-up. Uh, backdrop that I used to use to hold my green screen and some other small things and it seems that one of those things probably the pop-up backdrop itself uh, was balanced in a way that slowly it lost its balance and pressed the switch that turned off the pump because it was my fault obviously uh, there's nobody else living in the house at the moment so I have uh, I've let the agency know and I've told them that I would be willing to pay for the maintenance man's time if they want let's see uh, but I'm not I'm actually a little bit annoyed about that but not because of the the expense or that I had to live in a hardship without a bathroom for uh, two days but it's more like I looked at the problem and I thought, oh, this is a plumbing problem and I let it go. I did not use my noggin, didn't use my brain at all and did not bring my analytical skills to bear on the problem to try and find out what exactly is the problem because uh, it could be a plumbing problem but see, I knew that there was something that grinds, that does a grinding noise every time I flush the toilet. So if I had tried to solve it, I would have probably and uh, come on that solution sooner or later sooner than it got solved now it took two days but this is the story of my life i underestimate myself so often it's not even funny um like this daily vlog for example people had to push me several people said like oh you have to start daily vlog you need to do it more frequently you need to post every day and then i thought like okay i'll try it Otherwise, I was thinking, I can't do it. No, no, I can't do daily vlog. Daily vlog is too much. So I've only done it all times, and this is the 13th day. So I obviously can do it, uh, but I understand, underestimated myself. I hope you don't do that. You don't underestimate yourself, do you? Please don't, because there's nothing like, like I'm feeling today that I could have solved this problem two nights before. But so don't underestimate yourselves that's the message that's the lesson from this problem for both you and me now let's get on with the episode at hand uh, so um, i was planning to do something different today i was planning to do something uh, that is going to be a series and i'm going to call it make your first film and as you can guess it would be geared towards people who want to make a film or who want to make some kind of a video and they find it very overwhelming kind of like my camera basics thing uh, but because this is a film, so I would divide it. Actually, it I was going to do it in one shot, but I think if I'm going to do it on a daily basis, see, I have the content, the film tutorial, I have the daily blog that I do every day, and it doesn't give me time to do anything else. So why not chop it up into small pieces and then do it as a daily blog series? Smart, right? See, when I apply myself, I can do great things, just like my teacher said in school. So this will be uh, like taking it small in the small parts, doing some pre-production. Then why am I talking about that now? Uh, I'm gonna start that tomorrow. Uh, I was going to call it Super Saturday, which is why I was starting it today. Uh, but now I've got I finished this book last night, so I thought I'll get this out of the way first and then start that tomorrow. Um, I could call it Super Sunday, but that sounds something like you would find in a dessert shop. No, I'll find something else. We'll find a better name. 
I'm gonna be mad Monday. Wait until Monday and then start posting it then. Um, so, coming back to the book, The Magnificent Nine in the Firefly series. Uh, considering the speed which, with which I have finished this, I'm sure you can guess that I quite liked it. If you didn't guess it, then yes, I like this book. I liked it a lot, actually. So why did I like it? Let me let me get into the first very very basic part of this. Why are people writing uh, stories about a TV show that's been done and gone for at least what, twelve years? No, more than that. Maybe eighteen years. It was two thousand one, two thousand two that it was aired. Uh, I think. And why aren't people buying them? Why are people reading? This is just released. The reason is that we used to enjoy the world that Joss Whedon created in that in that TV show. We used to love meeting those characters, interacting with them, and watching them in action every episode. And now that's gone. The Fox Network. Uh, mm, calm down. Now that's gone. Taken from us very early. Um, I think we still want more. They did try to give us closure by creating that movie Serenity, but that was so good that it just made us want even more. Which is why people are writing graphic novels, comic books and stories like this on the TV show. And in that respect, it is a very successful novel because it did help me live in that world a little bit more to see those characters, to see their dialogue, to hear their dialogues and everything. It was wonderful. So really, really enjoyed that bit. And it is written in a nice style. Quite, It quite follows the style. I will give you the basic story and then you will see. Well, I won't give you the whole story, just the basic premise from the first two small chapters. Uh, the basic premise is there is a planet called Thetis and this planet has very little water and the water is literally the lifeline of the residents and some bad guy tries to take control of that water in order to, you know, extortion and all that kind of thing. So, uh, the crew of the Serenity, Serenity, the Magnificent Nine, they get roped in to help these guys, help these people, the residents of the planet, of the town, not the whole planet, just the town. And this town, Coogan's Bluff, this is where this whole story takes place. And the way the story goes, it's got quite a few plot twists. You know how I, I always keep telling you I could predict that in this movie, I could predict that in this movie. In this one, there are a few plot twists that I could not predict. I could predict a couple of scenes because I, I am familiar with this, with the uh, Firefly TV show and the style that it works in. Uh, so I could predict a couple of scenes, but not from far away, only after the scene got started. And also, I could not predict the main plot twists, which are like pivotal points in the story. So that was a nice, refreshing surprise, a story which I cannot predict and which surprises me, which makes me sit on the edge of my seat and like... <gasps> That's really, 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 really nice. Other than that, the dialogues. The dialogue is so good. It's the crisp, sarcastic, witty, dry humor. The same thing that we used to have in there. And that comes from the characters. The characters are true to form and you can see their interaction. And one thing that I really loved in this is that it takes place between Firefly and Serenity. So Shepard Book is alive. Wash is alive and you can see they they are both in full form and they are they are good, they are funny and it's, it's a joy, it's a pleasure to see the whole team together and then read about their adventure. Uh, the dialogue is the same same way, each character is very true to their form and I think uh, Joss Whedon might have done his job as a consulting editor, not just the name on the book cover uh, and he has guided, probably he has given some guidance about the dialogue and the story. And um, the dialogue also has the same way the Mandarin creative cursing uh, and the same way there is no subtitles or there is no um, explanation or translation in the square brackets, nothing. But you can get the meaning just like you could get that in the show. You can get the meaning from the, uh, from the context, from the sentences that are going before and after. Um, and I think at some point if somebody does a translation of that on the internet I would love to read that as well. 
Um, what can I tell you? So Jane's hat is in there, Jane's ugly hat, and that features quite a lot in there. Um, if that is a spoiler, I'll edit it out. I don't know if it is. I'll think about it. Um, but, well, you can see Jane's hat on the cover, so it's probably not a spoiler. Uh, the action is good, and the reason... Do you remember that episode, Heart of Gold? This is this takes place after Heart of Gold, and uh, Heart of Gold has been referenced there as well a little bit. Uh, and it is similar to that in the way that the team, the crew of Serenity, goes to help somebody out. So it works that way. But it's a quite nice big canvas of the story, and the detail is good, and the way the story is written is really, really good. So this author, James Lovegrove, Either he's a fan of Firefly or he's just a good writer so that he has um, he has been able to capture the essence of the show and put that in the same story, put that in a different story, the same style. Uh, so really enjoyed that. I would recommend this to you if you are a fan of Sanity. If you are if you're a brown coat, give me a like and keep watching because I'm going to talk about more things like that in the future as well. So do remember to subscribe. Uh, and if you're brown coat, you're really, really going to enjoy this book. Really. I can recommend that very highly. And you can guess that I really love the book uh, based on the fact that I found out this author has written another book which is called Big Damn Hero. And you can guess what that is based on. And I, I have already ordered that. It will be here either this evening or later by tomorrow. So I'll show you that and I'll talk about the review of that one as well when the time comes. Uh, I think it's from that uh, episode where Simon, Tam and River, they got captured by this uh, community where they need a doctor. And then later on in the same episode, they think that River is a witch. So they are trying to burn her at stake. And... Uh, the crew of Serenity, they come into action, they, they come to rescue them just at the right moment. And uh, as Zoe and Mel are walking with guns side by side towards the stake where uh, River is tied up and Mel says something like, so we're just here just in time, so what does it make us? And Zoe says, big damn hero sir, and he says, damn if we ain't. So that's, that's the kind of, it, it's the same kind of dialogues are in here as well. So I enjoyed it quite a lot. And the next book comes in, I'll show you that as well. Um, so this is me uh, signing off for today, day 13. Thank you very much for watching and please subscribe. See you tomorrow. Bye.